The electricity was finally here. Time to install the solar panels on our boat. This would involve drilling holes in each panel to connect them all, and then the three panels to the recycled bimini arch. Robbie pieced together this arch over some time, using our old roller furler extrusions as metal poles. Monocrystalline solar panels, 300 watts total, all provided by our lovely viewers. We plan on powering lights, computers, phones, and hopefully also our second-hand janky Dometic 12-volt electric cooler. We used standard 10-gauge solar panel wire, with end fittings selected so that the three panels connect together in parallel, and the wire fits perfectly into the slots of the furler extrusions. The community here is alive with engine work, just as we are focusing on our own diesel engine project. The power boats hire cranes to move their engines in and out each time that they have to do repairs. We, on the other hand, move ours manually. But Robbie hurt his lower back again, so we enlisted the help of our neighbors to move this little green Volvo bugger for hopefully one of the last times before it will be permanently installed. I was carefully sculpting the wooden blocks that will be fiberglassed firmly into place as engine stands. Another complication of preparing the stands was that the wood is so thick that we would need to drill through the blocks with a longer than usual drill bit. We could wait several days or weeks for a drill bit to arrive, or we could fashion a long one from some old bicycle wheel spokes. The only tool that we are missing for this task, it seems, is an anvil. Anvil, that's what we all need on a boat. <laughs> the spoke drill bits would allow us to drill all the way through the box and into the original wooden stands to prepare them for screwing into place before fiberglassing everything over. The space that we're working with is a small enough one that once the first block on one side is in, the second block needs to be screwed on by hand with our short manual screwdriver. And although it may not seem like much, I cannot describe to you how thrilling it is to have our little engine standing up on all four feet in its correct position, aligned more or less with the shaft. We were on our way aboard the scary bus to Playa del Carmen to buy paint to complete the engine install. It's important that we get a good two-part paint for use in the engine compartment and bilge area, which is relatively moist and a greasy environment. There's a gallon of paint with its reactor. And then we're going to get a bit of solvent. Yes, we'll get one liter solvent. In the midst of our engine install, a boat emergency was underway just outside of the marina entrance of Puerto Aventuras. Sailboat Tapazia had dragged onto the busy Puerto waterfront. And now Tony, Robbie, and two of our friends were helping the captain of the vessel to kedge it out. The poor vessel was really dug in well. The captain had lost control of the vessel when he was maneuvering solo out of the marina and the steering system failed. According to the captain, he didn't have time to deploy an anchor or to get the emergency tiller. Apparently, it all happened within a minute or two.
As you can see with this catamaran footage here, the marina entrance does not give very much room for error. Although there were many people looking on, curiously, the salvage team was lacking in material and human resources to move the boat forward. The weather was being more or less cooperative, however the tide remained fairly low. The ropes were chafing quickly on rocks and the crew was getting tired. They had tried their best to heel the boat over and to pull on the anchors whenever the boat seemed to be floating a bit. The task was slow going as they set and reset anchors, strategically using the winches and windlass. Flying the drone helped a bit to determine the best path around the rocks. That we're going perfectly straight to the rocks. <laughs> as straight as possible. Yes, we, we surprisingly put a, a, a very far anchor and if we follow exactly the line of that anchor it's it's gonna miss all the rocks so. Good work. Good work. Great video, bit, thanks. Bit by bit. be pulling and the tide's gonna be high at midnight so we can start pulling at around 10 o'clock as the tide starts getting high and if the boat moves for the next three hours it just keeps moving more and more because the tide gets higher and you do that every day and the tide goes up and down so you move your boat stop move your boat stop <laughs> and we're almost there we're just missing I think if we do five or six meters we should be free as the boat moved forward further and further out the ability to board safely became a little harder as the boat began to swing around more and more. There was also more concern about the structural state of the hull as the boat teetered aggressively on its keel. It was day four now of trying to catch Topazia off of the Puerto Beach. Although the crew had made some visible progress, this evening the wind was going to pick up. The forwardmost rope would finally chafe through, and only carnage would be awaiting the crew the next morning. rocking as the wind and the waves grew that night, and the disastrous dragging backwards tore the keel right off. A mysterious second crew aboard a Ponga showed up, which we later learned had been called out as the rescue entered its second phase now, removal of wreckage. They would ask Robbie to help remove the mast safely, as the keel being ripped from the hull had made the hull pliable and unsteady. The rigging was already loose and flopping around, ready to come down on somebody's head at any time. It's all gone. What a terrible scene for a sailor to see. And where was all this extra rope and these extra hands when Robbie needed them? No matter. It was time to bring down the mast. He and the team removed the windward stays first. Everyone was instructed to stay well forward and windward. A final forward lower remained holding the entire mast up. And when Robbie cut that, the mast went down into the water with a brutal slam.
Although it really would have been nicer to drag Topazia in with the panga in one piece, they did so instead with her in pieces. And for some damn reason, they parked her right next to our fine boat, as she would have to await a crane now to lift her out of the water. The sad, sunken vessel was a constant and present reminder to us of what a steering system failure can result in, which pushed us over the edge to disconnect our leaky hydraulic steering pipes, to drain the oil into some bottles, and to remove the steering column completely. We would just need to seal up the hole in the cockpit sole with some G10 material and thickened epoxy. The G10 and the cockpit would need to be prepped for epoxying. The area where the emergency tiller is placed would need to be prepped and solidified as well. We also determined that our new tiller would obviously need to be larger, more comfortable, and generally more robust. Now that we had removed all the screws, extra teak, sealant, and cleaned up the area, we would have to build the tiller attachment to the rudder post. And so we began designing the rudder post and tiller. Mm -hmm. 